how to square the Bridgeport head with a table. Basically, in this video, I'm going to show you how to trom the head, also known as squaring, on a Bridgeport machine. After putting these techniques to use, you should be able to square the head in under 5 minutes. At the end of this video, we're also going to cover the controversial topic of do I lock the knee or do I keep the knee unlocked? Okay, before we get started, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. Tools to help you square the head. Dial test indicator. You can also use a plunge indicator, but it's not shown in this video. Okay, let's talk about some of the equipment that we're going to use to trom the head or square the head. One of them is going to be an indicator and some kind of extender arm. Okay, so we can get the swing that we want. Now, why am I not just using this guy straight up and down so I can go like this? Because the further distance that I go out, because our cutter is only going to be about, let's pretend our cutter is going to be one inch. If I check a 10 inch swing, every, every one thou that I'm out here, I'll only be a one tenth out of square. So in general terms, most of the time when you check over a large distance, if you're within five thou, you don't, need to, you don't need to square the head. If you're just doing milling, the only time where you need to have your head more than five thou, in general, is if you're doing holes or you're doing some precision angles, like perpendicular angles, that have to be spot on. But besides that, most of the time, you can get away with it because your cutters are only small on a Bridgeport style mill like this. You shouldn't be using an eight inch cutter the 5 inch ring can also be mounted in a vise, so you don't actually have to take the vise off. Just take off the movable jaw, set it on top of the ways of the vise, and then it can be indicated this way as well. A ring like this is nice to use. It's a smaller ring, but that's still okay. It works great. Why do you want to use a ring? Because every time you go over top of your table here, you're going to get a click on, click off, click on, and click off, what it does is it shocks your indicator. And a lot of these indicators now will say shock proof, so it can take a little bit of abuse, but you still don't want to do it because it's very fine gears and fine springs inside your indicator. So when you're running across here, it's a nice smooth surface. And you also don't get the, the issue where your indicator won't, won't repeat because you've hit it too hard. You should also never use more than a quarter of the dial of your indicator. The large ground parallel. Another option is a large parallel. This allows you to check either your tilt or your yaw or you can say your x-axis rotation or your y-axis rotation at a time. The ground one two three block. Another option is to use a one two three block or a ground parallel or use four ground parallels or two when you're only checking one axis at a time. So I can have it here, swing, move over to here and check there as well. The raised ring. What are the drawbacks of all three of these? The biggest drawback is you have to have the vise off. So you're taking the vise off, putting the vise back on. That's where our last option comes into play. The tool that people like are one of these elevated. This one's made by Easy Tram. What it does is it elevates it so you can actually keep your vise on instead of having to pull your vise on and off. It just makes it easier. And you can make one of these relatively easily as well. X axis tilt, we're also going to call it rotation. First thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen off the four bolts. Now let's take a look inside. We need to erase some of this stuff. Okay, take a look at where the adjusting worm shaft comes out. There's also a gear attached. That's the worm and the gear. Okay, you must loosen off those four bolts before you try adjusting the worm gear or you will actually break the gear. What you're looking at is the actual mechanism that turns the head for you when you move your wrench. Do not adjust the worm gear without loosening off the head bolts. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to trom or square the head today. In this axis here, 
we're going to call this tilt, which is going to be tilting upon the x-axis. When we tilt in the y-axis, this way here, that's going to be called yaw. So I, I have two black lines here and here. That's to help me guide so I know when to stop. So this one's pretty easy because we're tilting about center. So what's on one side, I can just half it to get to the other side. We're going to use our 19 millimeter wrench. We have these guys loosened off with only one snugged up a small amount. I'm going to put this onto our pivot. We're at zero here, <clears throat> and we're a lot out here. I'm at about five, I'll change that to zero. Rotate over here. <clears throat> I'm at 12, I'm at five. So one half of that, I come over here, I'm at 7, I'm going to zero this out just to make it easier to see. I'm at 4, put that in half, I'll go to 2, looper for Ray, 2 and 2, lift my table up to 0 so it's easier for you to see, 0, and 0, therefore, I'm perpendicular, or my head is strong, or you can say the head is square in the x-axis. So now what I want to do is I double check to make sure that it's perfectly, perfectly at zero. So now what I want to do is I want to tighten these bolts down. I'm going to tighten my number one bolt, then I'm going to tighten my number two bolt, my number three bolt, then my number four bolt in a crisscross pattern. It didn't move, so I'm good. Yaw is the rotation in the Y axis. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you noticed when we did the rotation, it was about center. If we take a look at this one, see the large red dot? That's the pivot point. And if we take a look at our spindle, that's not the center. Okay, that's our rotation where we're rotating around the spindle, but our pivot point is a large red dot. That's why this one becomes a little bit more tricky. If you follow the steps, you will not have any problems. Okay, let's start by loosening the yaw locking nuts. Keep in mind, on some models, there's nuts on both sides of the machine, so you really need to watch out for that. Once you have all three, or all six of the bolts loosened, you can remove the wrench and put it on the worm adjusting shaft. Let's take a look at this nice cutout, shall we? So what we have is we have the worm, and we have the gear. It is very important, just like when we're adjusting the tilt, do not try to adjust the yaw with the worm and pinion until you've loosened off the clamping bolts. You will do internal damage. Okay, so right now I'm at approximately zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around. And I'm at negative 27. So what I'm going to do is come around here, come back here, I'm going to put this in half. So I'm going to move about uh, 13. Z up until I reach zero again. Swing this around. I'm at negative 15. Take out half of that amount. Take out half of the amount. Move back. Zero out, which is only a half now. Whoop. Move back. Take out half of the amount again, which is going to be like two and a half. Move back. Zero my Y, my uh, 
Is that out? Move back. Take out two and a half, uh, one and a half now. Move back. Move to zero again. Take out half the amount. Zero again. Zero. And there I am, zero, zero. The steps to readjust our yaw axis. Loosen off the yaw locking nuts. Then we're going to position our indicator to the 90 degree. We're going to zero out our height, so the indicator reads zero. Swing the indicator back to the 270 degree mark. Then we're going to adjust the yaw to zero one half of the dial reading. Then we're going to swing the indicator back to the 90 degree. And then from there, we're going to lift up the Z axis to zero out the indicator. Then we're going to swing the indicator back to the 270 degree mark. We will repeat those steps as many times as necessary until our indicator reads zero. The controversial should the knee or the z-axis be locked when squaring ahead. Okay, another controversial point is, do I lock the knee or not lock my z-axis when I'm tromming the head or squaring the head? You think, how can there be controversy when, <laughs> when you're squaring a head? Well, there actually is. If I lock my head, what's going to happen is I'm actually tightening the gibbs up and then this... Uh, my knee will actually tilt up. When I loosen it, gravity will make it sag a small amount. If you're locking your knee or your z-axis when you're machining, you should absolutely have your z-axis or your knee locked when you're tromming your head. Hopefully you picked up a tidbit of knowledge with this video. Don't forget, if you want to see other great videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. Also, if you have any ideas for other videos, leave the comments below. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon of my face and I'll do the rest. Have a great night and thank you for watching the video.